Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about the limit comparison test. So this comparison test is very similar to the basic comparison test we talked about in the previous video, but this one is this one is slightly different from the original comparison test we talked about. So with that, let's go and talk about how this test kind of works. So here's a test in question. So suppose that we have two series. So suppose that we have the following two series. The first one is the summation of Bn and the summation of Bn. And of course, we have a few conditions in this thing. And then we have the conditions that An is bigger than or equal to zero. Bn is bigger than or equal to zero for all n. Recall that this kind of this symbol right there means for all. So we have the following kind of situations. So define the following. So define c as the limit as n approaches infinity of e n over b n. Okay, so here's, a, here's kind of the conditions that are going on. Okay, so if c is bigger than zero and finite, so in other words, c is less than infinity, then either, so then, both series, so e n and b n to be very precise, so then, both series converge or diverge. So as long as this condition is true, and this condition is true, we can just check either one of the series, and if we and if one of those converge, then the other one has to converge. If one of them diverge, the other one has to diverge. So fairly straightforward test. So let's kind of do a few examples of this thing and see how this works. Okay, so the first example, we have the summation, so we want to prove to show, or the better wording is determine if the summation from n equals two to infinity of four n squared plus n over the square root of, or not the square root, the cube root of n to the seven plus n cube converges or diverges. Okay. So we can use the limit comparison test to do this limit. So let's go ahead and figure out which series to use. Well, obviously, the first series we're going to be using is a n is equal to 4n squared plus n divided by the cube root of n to the 7 plus n cubed. Okay, now, how do we determine the second limit? Or not the second limit, but the second series. The strategy for this is we is we usually tend to look at what happens at extremely large values of n and kind of use that as our second choice. So what do I mean by that? So b n is going to behave in the following way. So what happens at extremely large values? In fact, I'm I'm not going to write the b n for a second. So for extremely large values of n, this is going to dominate the this term. So this is going to end up becoming 4n squared. And then we're going to d divide this by, well, what's, what are we going to get? We go, we'll get the cube root of n to the 7 plus n cubed. So which term dominates? It's going to be the n to the power of 7. So we have the cube root of n to the power of 7. Okay, so what is this equal to? So we get 4n squared over n to the power of 7 over 3. Okay, so if we go ahead and divide this, we'll get 4 over n to the power of 1 over 3. And this is going to be equal to our bn. So this is how we determine, well, 
the second kind of series to use. So according to a comparison test, now we would do the limit as n approaches infinity of a n over b n. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do this limit out. So now we get the limit as n approaches infinity of this big kind of limit right there. So that's this one. And then we would divide this by bn. But dividing by bn is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we could just write n to the power of 1 over 3 divided by 4. And then we can pull the one over four. We can pull this four out of the limit. So we get one over four times times this exact same limit. So let me just go ahead and copy paste this thing. And there we go. So we only we don't have that four anymore. So now what we can do is we can multiply the one over three inside. So if we go ahead and do that, we'll get one over four times the limit as n goes to infinity of 4 to the 4 times n to the power of 7 over 3 plus n to the power of 4 over 3 and then we have the cube root of n to the power of 7 times 1 plus 1 over n to the 4. Okay, so what are we going to get? So if we go ahead and do this out, well, we can factor 7 over 3 out of the limit. So we'll get n to the power of 7 over 3 times 4 plus 1 over n on the top and then on the bottom we can factor out the n to the 7 which we'll have to take the cube root off so you will get n to the power of 7 over 3 times the cube root of 1 plus 1 over n to the power of 4 but then these cancel so we end up getting 1 over 4 times this limit, but this is going to go to 1 and this is going to go to 4. So we just get 4 over 1 or 1. And 1 is, of course, bigger than 0 and 1 is less than infinity. So the conditions of the limit comparison test are satisfied. So that means both the series have to converge or both have to diverge. But let's take a look at the second series. The second series is the following kind of series right there. So the second series is the summation from n equals 2 to infinity of 4 over n to the 1 over 3. But the thing is, if we take the 4 out, we get 4 times the summation from n equals 2 to infinity of 1 over n to the power of 1 over 3, like so. But then this is a p-series, but in this case p is less than 1, so this is divergent. And of course, according to the limit comparison test, if this diverges, so does the original. So that means that this thing, which the new the new word somehow magically got erased, so it's going to be four n squared plus n. So this particular series right there, uh, we just go ahead and paste that. So this thing. Right there also diverges like so so that's really good so that's that answers that question so not too bad we just have to be a bit careful about using the limits but overall it's not too bad to work with okay now let's do this one so it's going to be the same question, except the, except the series in question is going to be a little bit different than the, than the one in the previous question, of course. So if you go ahead and copy paste this thing, we get the following. Okay, so this is the original thing, except the series in this case is going to be different. And it's going to be 1 to infinity of 1 over the square root of n squared plus 19 times n. Okay, we want to see if this thing converges or diverges. But here's the thing. This is, we're going to use the same uh, process to determine convergence or divergence of this thing. Okay. So in this one, well, if you check, if you check for very large values, so an is going to be 1 over 
the square root of n squared plus 19n. So for extremely large values of n, we get the following. Well, for very large values, this n squared is going to dominate this 19n because it's much bigger. So we get 1 over the square root of n squared plus 19n. And that's going to become 1 over the square root of n squared. And that's going to become 1 over n. But the thing is, like, normally you would have an absolute value. But because the sum is going to infinity, we're just going to assume that this is 1 over n. And that's going to be our bn. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of division. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of a n over b n. But then this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of a n over b n. So it's going to be 1 over the square root of n squared plus 19n divided by 1 over n. But then this is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of n over the square root of n squared plus 19n. Okay. Well, this is going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n times 1 plus 19 over n. Now, technically, I should be putting an absolute value in this n right there, but because the limit is going to be infinity, I can just discard it because that thing is going to be positive, so it doesn't really matter here. Either way, that cancels, and we end up with 1 over the square root of 1, which is just 1, so it's just 1. But of course, 1 is bigger than 0. So we know that by the limit comparison test, because 1 is bigger than 0, uh, both, of the, both of the series that we compared have to converge or diverge. So remember that we picked this as our comparison. So we have a summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. But this thing is divergent meaning that this thing right here, so the original series in question, so this series right here, this also diverges. So that's it. Okay, so that basically covers all the examples I wanted to go over. So if you have any questions about any of the examples or the concept in this video let me know in the comments i'll be happy to answer but otherwise if this really helped you please remember to like comment share and subscribe and i'll really appreciate it thank you all so much and have a great day